Hello dear learners, I am Nitika Kanojia, Assistant Professor in the Department of English, Uttarakhand Open University and today we will study about Romantic period in English literature. There has been a great debate on when this period started and when it ended, but it is widely believed by scholars that it started around 1790s as a response to the disillusionment with the Enlightenment values of reason and order in the aftermath of the French Revolution of 1789. This period became more influential when William Wordsworth and Samuel Taylor Coleridge collectively published Lyrical Ballads in 1798. And from there, there was no looking back for the Romantic poets. Major poets of this period were, of course, William Wordsworth and S.T. Coleridge, but also William Blake, Lord Byron, Percy Bysshe Shelley, John Keats, and many more. Some of the notable female poets were Charlotte Smith, Joanna Bailey, Anna Barbold, Felicia Hemans, Mary Robinson, Anna Seward, etc. In our syllabus of BAEL N101 Understanding Poetry 1, we will study about William Wordsworth, P.B. Shelley, and John Keats. Let us now start with William Wordsworth. William Wordsworth, who lived from 1770 to 1850, was a prominent English poet of English Romantic era. He was born in Cockermouth, Cumbria, and is best known for his poems celebrating the beauty of nature and for his role as a key figure in the Romantic literary movement. Wordsworth's life was marked by a deep connection to the Lake District, where he found inspiration for his most famous works. Wordsworth, along with Coleridge, is often considered as one of the founders of the Romantic literary movement. His poetry emphasized the importance of emotion, individualism, and the beauty of nature, all of which became central themes of Romantic literature. The publication of Lyrical Ballads in 1798 marked a significant turning point in the Romantic era. This collection of poems challenged the established poetic norms and introduced a new, more natural and emotional style of writing. Wordsworth's poetry celebrated the natural world and its ability to inspire awe and transcendence. His emphasis on the sublime in nature as seen in the poems like lines composed a few miles above Tintern Abbey greatly influenced romantic poets who sought to cap capture the power and beauty of the natural world in their own works. Wordsworth believed in the power of individual imagination and the importance of emotional expression in poetry. Wordsworth's ideas and poetic techniques left a lasting impact on later romantic poets such as John Keats, P.B. Shelley and Lord Byron. His emphasis on simplicity, the, la the use of everyday language and the expression of personal experiences continued to resonate with subsequent generations of writers, contributing to the enduring legacy of Romanticism in literature. Let us now look at the poem, The Solitary Reaper, by William Wordsworth. This composition, crafted in November of 1805 and later published in 1807, possesses a unique lyrical beauty. It effectively captures the melodious tune sung by a young woman from the mountainous highlands of Scotland. In The Solitary Reaper, the poem's theme displays a remarkable level of poetic creativity. The poet observes a highland girl working alone in the field, reaping and singing a hauntingly melancholic song in the local dialect which he does not comprehend. Wordsworth speculates about the song's meaning, but its significance is secondary to the extraordinary sweetness of the music. The poet is deeply moved by her singing and it has become a lasting source of his joy. The poem revolves around the song that the poet envisions. He had the experience of hearing a lone highland girl sing and her music fills the valley with a mournful melody as she sings while harvesting and bundling the grain. In the final stanza, the poet reflects on his reaction to this song. The noteworthy aspect of the music he encountered is that it profoundly captured his imagination to the extent that he is believed to be timeless. 
It captivated him so deeply that he continues to hear its echoes in his mind as he continues on his journey. The romantic poets demonstrated a significant fascination with distant and historical themes, which is evident in the solitary reaper. Wordsworth, in general, tends to transform ordinary, everyday human experiences into poetic subject matter, presenting them in a manner that imbues them with an uncommon or romantic quality. Wordsworth employs the stanza with eight lines, consisting of a four-line section and two pairs of lines with eight syllables each. The fourth line each in each stanza has just three metrical feet. This stanzaic structure is an elaboration of the Billard stanza. The theme of The Solitary Reaper by William Wordsworth can be summarized in three key points. The poignancy of solitude. The poem highlights the solitude of the reaper in a remote rural setting. Her isolation serves as a central theme, emphasizing the idea that in the midst of the tranquil countryside, her solitary labor and song carry a profound sense of loneliness. Second, the transcendence of music and emotion. The poem underscores the transformative power of music and human emotion, though incomprehensible to the narrator, transcends language and culture, touching the universal human heart with its melancholic beauty. Third, memory and nostalgia. The poem hints at the possibility that the reaper's song is rooted in the memories of old, unhappy, far off things and battles long ago. This theme of memory and nostalgia suggests that past holds a deep significance for individuals and the reaper's song may serve as a connection to the collective memory of her community or culture. The literary devices used by the poet in the poem The Solitary Reaper are imagery. The poem is rich in vivid imagery that appeals to the reader's senses. Wordsworth paints a clear picture of solitary reaper in the field. Alone she cuts and binds the grain and her melancholy strain. The reader can almost see and hear the reaper and her song which creates a strong emotional connection with the poem's theme of the solitude and the power of music. The second, the second literary device is refrain. The poem's, use of, the poem's use of a refrain, the repeated question, will no one tell me, will no one tell me what she sings at the end of each stanza serves as a powerful structural device. This repetition emphasizes the narrator's intense curiosity and desire to understand the meaning of the reaper's song highlighting the central theme of the poem, the universality of human emotion and the potential for a simple, unfamiliar experience to resonate deeply with the observer. The third literary device is personification. The poem personifies the reaper's song, suggesting that it might be expressing emotions and memories from the past. The lines for old, unhappy, far off things and battles long ago personify the song as if it has a life and voice of its own. The literary device infuses the poem with a sense of mystery and depth, inviting the reader to contemplate the reaper's song and its potential significance. These literary devices contribute to the poem's emotional resonance and its exploration of the profound impact of a solitary, seemingly mundane moment on the human heart and imagination. And now we have The World is Too Much With Us by William Wordsworth. The World is Too Much With Us is a sonnet. The World is Too Much With Us is a sonnet by William Wordsworth that laments the materialistic and disenchanted state of humanity in the face of nature. Through this poem, Wordsworth expresses his concern for the loss of a deep connection with the natural world and the prevalence of materialism in the society of this time. 
This critical analysis explores the key themes, literally devices, and the enduring relevance of this powerful work. The themes in the work are alienation from nature. The poem begins with a lament that the world is too much with us, highlighting the idea that human beings have become the human beings have become estranged from nature. William Wordsworth expresses his frustration that people are more concerned with materialistic possessions and worldly concerns than with the beauty and spiritual value of the natural world. The second is spiritual emptiness. William Wordsworth suggests that this alienation has led to the spiritual emptiness. He mourns the loss of the connection between the human soul and the natural world which he believes is essential for a meaningful and fulfilled life. The literary devices used in the poem, The World is Too Much with Us, are sonnet form. The poem follows the traditional Petrarchan sonnet structure, consisting of an octave and a sestate. The octave presents the problem, the sestate, the sestate suggests a solution or reflection. This form enhances the poem's emotional impact. The second is imagery. Wordsworth uses vivid imagery to depict the power and beauty of nature. Phrases like, sea that bears her bosom to the moon and Proteus rising from the sea create a strong visual and sensory experience contrasting the natural world with the material one. And the third literary device is illusion. The poem alludes to the classical mythology with references to Proteus and Nereus, emphasizing the ancient and timeless quality of nature in contrast to the transitory nature of materialism. Fourth is repetition. The repetition of the phrase getting and spending underscores the central theme of materialism, emphasizing the relentless pursuit of wealth and possessions. The world is too much with us remains relevant in the contemporary world. It serves as a reminder of the importance of rekindling our connection with nature, especially in an age marked by environmental degradation and a relentless focus on consumerism. Wordsworth's message is a Wordsworth's message is a call to reevaluate our priorities. This sonnet continues to resonate with readers today, urging us to reflect on our own relationship with the environment and the materialistic pursuits that may distract us from the profound beauty and spiritual depth of the natural world. We will continue with Percy by Shelley and John Keats in the upcoming lectures. Thank you.